For years, the purple fence at the corner of Brookline and Franklin Streets in Cambridge has been trying to tell us something. A mix of metaphysics, humor, and ecstatic visions, this primitive art project is constantly evolving. Owner Peter Valentine opts not to speak to the camera, preferring that his fence do the talking for him. But not all bold statements require writing on a wall. And not all art houses have to be splashed with color, no. Sometimes all it takes is a great concept to stand out. The impetus, I guess, was to make a house that stuck out into the view and be part of the view. When architect Warren Schwartz set out to design a second home in West Stockbridge, he had the good sense to listen to his wife, Sheila Fiakowski, a violinist with the Boston Symphony Orchestra. I asked for a ranch house. Surprisingly, not surprisingly, knowing my husband, he turned it. So it's really a ranch house, except it's turned the wrong it's, way. It's, on a, the it's a raised ranch. The result, a cantilevered box of light projecting 46 feet out from the hillside, inside a sense of floating on air. Some people get vertigo when they come into the house because it's so long and you can see out of it. Some people are afraid to stand at the end. Built entirely of steel and glass, the structure is a replacement for their first house on this hillside, another Schwartz-designed experiment made of wood. Interesting for sure, but a tad musty. The other house was all wood, and this one's no wood. <laughs> no. And, and uh, there's a big difference. Basically, the house smells good. No, no wood, wood no except wood. the violin. There must be something about the Berkshire Hills that encourages fantasy to take flight. In Tiringham, the enchanting Santarella estate. Built by the sculptor Henry Hudson Kitson in the 1800s, Santarella features a silo studio cottage straight out of a fairy tale. Fantasy is alive and well in nearby Richmond, too. My wife and I are interior designers, and I was looking for an excuse to be outside. When Matt Larkin bought this Berkshire farmhouse 30 years ago, he thought the grounds were perfect for topiary, the art of clipping shrubbery into ornamental shapes. Just one problem. When I went to go find it, I realized that unlike Europe and England, you can't buy large-scale topiary. It doesn't exist in this country. It does now. Larkin taught himself the art of bending nature to his will. He even taught himself how to weld, all so he could build the metal frames used on some pieces. These things are all manipulated, as we like to call it. You know, We're heavily into what could be called plant torture around here. We make hedges, we cut things, we tie things, we break things, we torment them. Larkin's work at Black Barn Farm has been featured in magazines like House and Garden and Vogue. Along with classic shapes, Larkin has a soft spot for the whimsical and weird, which leads us back to a far corner of the property. We are in the Garden of Discomfort, which is a garden that I conceived as a metaphor for the fact that all things have to die in order for other things to live. So we chose the plant material as stumps, as being, you know, tree corpses. Most of the plant material in this garden is toxic or poisonous, one extent or the other. There's even a hermit hut. See, in the 1800s, English landowners would hire drifters to live in rustic huts and act melancholy. The position of ornamental hermit in the Garden of Discomfort is currently Open. I think we're at a time right now where there's some out-of-work actors that might enjoy a stint in the country. The ornamental hermit craze was short-lived with the landed gentry over in England, but it left a lasting legacy. Those popular little garden gnomes are direct descendants of the living hermits. You may have noticed some browning on the topiary at Black Barn Farm, the result of a brutal winter last year. Mark L Matt Larkin says it wasn't the cold, but the wild swings in temperature were too much for the shrubs natural defenses. Next, the homeowners are kept getting a no from town officials so they cooked up a surprise.